What's happening, boys and girls? My name is Jeffrey Scott Mitchell, Jeffrey at Jeffrey TV, coming to you live on Memorex from an undisclosed location, people. People, it feels good. People, it feels good. Regardless of how over overcast and cloudy it may be here in Southern California, in my beautiful, beautiful Southern California, I am currently technically in the Inland Empire, but pretty much this is what California is looking like right now. The temperature when I Googled said it was 59 degrees this morning. The forecast says it'll probably get up to 78. This may or may not burn off. This may or may not be a marine layer. A marine layer in the Inland Empire. This far off the coast. I'm not sure that's possible. Or if it's called something else. But anyway, it's a glorious Thursday. I feel like I'm making progress. It's not that I wasn't making progress before. It's not that I wasn't on the track, right track and doing the right things and quote unquote succeeding in small increments before. But the last few days or maybe week, I feel I've made big strides towards controlling or governing my urges or cravings. Hey! Don't run me over. I was just asking you not to run me over when I was just kind of, you know, on with your day. So I was saying, <laughs> homie was out for one this morning. <laughs> What was I saying? Homie hit me up, he come flying. People in the morning be driving, and I don't blame him. He, was, he be driving, they trying to get to work, they trying to do this, they trying to do that. You know, they ain't looking, and they probably really ain't used to pedestrians. So I be like, whoa. <laughs> Anyhow. I feel like I'm making strides towards my urges, my cravings, whatever you want to call them. As to where I can very almost to where I can very almost go to sleep without having eating something or have something in my belly or that late, late snack to put me down, you know, to make me fall off and go to sleep. Last night, I had a few wafer cookies and some, and there was some Mike and Ike's left over in the bedroom from the last time I was here. I ate those laying in the bed. I just got on the scale last night before bed, and it's at 218.6. I was really excited about that number. I was really excited about that number, especially after work today. I felt like I ate a lot at work, and I may or may not have, because they had, uh, I think it was all hands day. So we had lunch, so they had uh, hamburgers and french fries from the Shake Shack brought in. It was good, I got Angus beef, blah, blah, blah. It was, you know, good, but french fries were cold. And that was just strange to me that the french fries were served cold. I ate them anyway. They were critical cut, you know, not my favorites, but I got them down. They were still kind of soft. And the texture was kind of close, but I ate them and I ate that hamburger. Then I think, and I didn't eat any pub mix. 
I didn't have any pub mix in the morning. I don't think. <laughs> no, I didn't because the food was there. So I just went and got a hamburger. And yesterday also, I ate with people. I ate with Linda. She used to be in our group. Then she moved on and sat there and gossiped with her. True gossip too, you know, department gossip. My gripes, letting stuff off my chest. You know, just saying this, saying that. It was good to, you know, talk there because me and her, I used to sit in front of her for maybe a year or two. I forget how long. She used to sit right behind me when we was on the third floor. When we was on the fourth floor. So, you know, so we was able to, you know, we had a rapport and interaction in a history. And we got along. The thing about her too, she's real cool. And the thing was her little daughter that saw Hamilton and I didn't see it. And it made me mad. <laughs> I was like, you wanna see Hamilton? On Broadway, you made all that money? Waste of money. You didn't get nothing out of it. <laughs> but like, that's back when tickets was like 500 or whatever. You know, I was just being, you know, overly dramatic. But basically, still making the point. You know, some of that is definitely still real. It's, it's definitely not, you know, faking anything. It's just maybe exaggerated. But, cause I was like, she saw Hamilton? This was like four or five years. This is before the pandemic. This was probably, me yeah, a year before the pandemic. The pandemic was in 2020. I had to look it up. Pandemic was four years ago. Life has changed. So it was good to, and I, cause I don't usually eat with people. I usually take the food and wait till I'm by myself to where it could just be me and the food, no distractions. I said, uh, and yesterday, while I was doing this, I took a hit on my performance to start to available. I punched in, right? I punched in and I went, and then you're supposed to like be available to take calls at 12.15 or so. I wasn't back there till like 12.30, 12.40 or something. I just took a hit because that's what Wednesdays are for. Wednesdays are for like camaraderie and team building and collaborating. So. That was my thing. And so it was cool to be socialized actually, eat and socialize and, you know, be out in the common area. You know, cause, I mean, I'm out going, I talk to everybody and I'm walking through the halls. You know, everybody knows Jeffrey, blah, blah, blah. And I'm coming to work and I was sitting there just talking to myself and doing what I do. And I realized that I'm in the office now. I'm not at home. You know, I'm not at home by myself. But it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, I should run. I should do this. Because uh, I'm... Yeah, because I'm steady talking to myself, talking out loud, you know editorializing what I'm doing. <laughs> and there's like people around me. And there's people from other departments around me. Cause we use hoteling and you know, people can sit anywhere they book. Wherever you book is where you book. You know, and I guess certain teams try to, you know, book their seats in a block so they can all sit together. We probably don't do that as much as, you know, we're a, older kind of crew you know more experienced just older it just you know we ain't so much worried about all of that it just ain't our concern but so we had other people in our area and i'm just talking singing, singing to myself doing it you know and i realized wow and i thought about that my report card it said Jeffrey talks to herself, 
and anyone around him whenever he pleases. Another person not looking. Look up! Now now you gonna stop with this on pass. Thinking about people running me over while I'm walking. Happens everywhere. But, so you know, I'm, and I thought about that and I posted about it on Facebook. It's one of the, I'm proud of it for whatever reason. I'm proud of it. And in that post I put, there is nothing, but nothing in capital letters. There's nothing I love more than being Jeffrey. And that's the honest to God truth. There's nothing I more, I love more than being Jeffrey. And it's not that I love Jeffrey, that's different. And it's not that I don't love Jeffrey. It's not that I love Jeffrey, don't love Jeffrey. And it's not that I love Jeffrey. The emphasis is being, the emphasis being on I love being Jeffrey the most, just being the person I am. The things I do, accomplish, you know, I'm privy to, have earned, possess, the respect, reputation, whatever, the person I am, in the circles that I run, people around me, family, the whole thing, it's the whole, it's the whole thing. Another thing I wanna to say too, one thing about California, all you hear is these fucking blowers all the time. Blowers and these gas power lawn landscaping tools. My God, it's like constant. Every day it's a different one. It's like constant. And they be using weed whackers now to cut grass. And trim and all that. And that's the, that noise is constant. Every, just about all the, wake up in the morning, uh, and one thing I got to say about that though, is usually Mexicans is doing it, but when you walk by them and they're doing it, they stop. Very respectful, very polite, very, I don't know if the word is mannerly or whatever it is. Whatever it is, when you walk by them, they stop, they put it down. And they'll nod or play it off. Or sometimes look at you and they'll, you know, signify like this guy, he even waved and went, almost apologized. Yeah. Because they don't, that's the one thing I noticed across the board, kind of. That they will stop and they will um, make sure. They give you your room and your respect for whatever reason. So that's good too. So, but what was I saying about the weight? About my weight and my urges? I think I got a handle on it. I really do think I got a handle on it. Applebee's. Applebee's got a family pack that we got in Vegas one time. It's pretty good. A whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of food and stuff. And a family pack. He was like, give me some of that. Give me some of that. Give me some of that. Came up to $200. Fed about 15 people or so, though. And had food left over. So. Uh, so, you know, that was good. Applebee's. Don't sleep. They do okay. They do okay. <clears throat> and um, so, and the urges and the cravings. Because one thing, you know, I'm saying, I, am I getting better? Am I getting better? You know, am I really getting better with this urges and craving thing? Or, you know, am I just fooling myself? Or, you know, how does that work? And then I stopped to think about it. And I remember there was a time when I could not stop eating. There was a time, it was probably between that doggone, 
November 30th, no, between December 30th and January 30th, when it was, I couldn't stop it. I could not stop. I could not stop. I would eat until my stomach hurt. Till I ate so much that I'd be so full that my stomach would hurt. That's how much I would be eating. And I couldn't stop. I'm past that now. That part, if I look back and remember that, that makes me realize, yeah, you've made big progress since then. Because I can remember sitting there eating, sitting in my chair eating, wanting to stop, and I couldn't. <clears throat> I would go back and get more. And my stomach was just full. I know I was gonna get a couple times, I got sick. Eat so much, and go lay down in the bed, and you get just not good. Not good, get sick, stomach start going in the wrong direction or whatever. It's a killer. But I couldn't stop. I could not stop. But now, I got much better control of it. My weight is definitely coming down. 218.6. Last night, I was looking through how much, you know, my best numbers on a Thursday. A 217.4 I got today is the best I've had a long time. Might be the best I had this year. So I'm definitely encouraged to be out here. I'm feeling good about myself. Well, I always feel good about myself. I should say I feel good about my progress or that, you know, I feel good that I'm going in a direction and excited to see what the scale is going to say when I get back. But I understand, you know, that since this is a really low one or a fairly low way, the next one, you know, may be a little underwhelming because it may not drop as much. But we'll see. And then I'll get to the weekend. And that's where I gotta behave. When I get to the weekend, <clears throat> that's when I gotta watch myself. And being out here, there really ain't much to do. Even back home, when there's a lot to do, I don't do it. <laughs> But out here, it's really so kicked back that you really just, you know, it's like, I ain't gonna say no motivation to do anything, but you know, where I'm at, I'm 20 minutes from Hollywood, 20 minutes from Venice Beach, you know, 20 minutes from downtown, you know, I jump in the car. I could be Venice Beach on accident. In fact, I went to Venice Beach on accident more than once. I hung out. Had a fairly good time. Out here, ain't gonna get none of that. Even though there's stuff going on out here, I may not know about it. You know, so there's that. But the Steelers schedule came out. They, the day after the Funketeers ball, they play in Indianapolis. Nowhere near. DC where I'm gonna be at on the 28th. So, that's that. Would have been nice to catch a Steeler game in that area since I was there, fly back Monday or so, but you know, we'll work it out. So now I guess I can go ahead and get my airfare and my Hotel for the Funketeers ball. Tickets ain't even released yet. Oh, speaking of the Funketeers ball, I heard a rumor about who or may not, who may or may not be playing. And <clears throat> it's uh, the best possible person or group out there. 
the best, the very best, there's nobody better. There's no person or no group better. No choice is better than the one I heard. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, it, you can't do better than the rumor I heard. So that'll be good. I don't want to say anything. Because I don't know how official it was. I don't even know if it was, you know, if I accidentally overheard it. But no, it actually, it was definitely told, me, told to me to regularly. But it was, you know, and the person who told me, <clears throat> usually, it's, it's 100%. I mean, I know it. I know it's right, but I just don't, you know, trying to be overly fact-checky and overly critical of this dissemination of information. But the other person I heard, the group, it's the best possible choice. So, we'll see. Hunger Tears Ball, September 28th. Bethesda, Maryland. 2024, Chocolate City Alliance, the creation of George H. Darden, legacy going forward, and prior. Also, the LA Maggots playing June 15th here in Los Angeles. They, uh, it's on one of my niece's graduation days. So we're gonna see how that's gonna work out. My granddaughter gonna be here. <clears throat> I wanna take her so she can see. Because my daughter gonna wanna come too. So we'll see how that go. Take some folks out, you know. Maybe everybody, maybe other people will come too. You know, I'm only worried about me and granddaughter. I want to expose her to that. Let her see, you know, what that's about. A live band, live music, and the such. See how she acts. It's in the hood, too. So, that ought to be fun. Yeah, you know, I hear it. getting them steps did, doing what I do. Ouch. Feeling pretty good about myself and about everything. Keeping that weight down, getting that weight down. I'm so happy. But like I said, I'm kind of really happy that. I don't have that urge to eat or craving I had because literally I would be, I couldn't stop eating. I could not stop. And I would even feel myself getting sick saying I need to stop and I couldn't. That's when I knew, yeah. To be honest with you, I knew it, but I also said to myself, go with it, forget it, fuck it, just, just go, whatever, whatever, fix it later, and just enjoy. I just let myself sink all the way in it, lost control, gave up control, and I know that definitely played a part in it. That was definitely a part of it, but I just said, forget it. So, but now, I believe I'm back on the track of having overcome quitting nicotine and maybe getting back to a balance of craving that stimulation or something to replace that stimulation. <clears throat> and 
And I, I definitely feel that way. I definitely feel. I definitely feel that I'm over it somewhat. You know, you never know. So I'm not going to do an end zone dance yet. But, you know, I like the way things are going down. I like the way it's happening. Anyway. So we're going to y'all two times. For me, for the funk. For every elementary particle that's ever existed in any atom in this or any universe that ever was, is or will be. The totality of it all. Theory of universe. Hypothesis of all is one. My name is Jeffrey.